man, you come straight out of a cone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I am your host, the Anomaly, the Goliath, the most electrifying man in all of digital media, Will Farrow. Happy Saturday. Glad y'all are in here for those that are checking out the live. Shout out to I'm Just Cheek over on Twitch for using the emoji, man. That's how I know you're a subscriber, and I appreciate that. Um, but welcome everybody so glad to have y'all here we got a lot to talk about today we got a lot to talk about in video games we got a lot to talk about in television we got a lot to talk about in movies a lot of stuff was happening this week and i'm i'm excited i got disappointments and i know people want to know what's going on with blade more news coming from Blade, and it's not looking good, man. It's really not looking good. We got that and so much more to talk about today, so I'm glad that y'all are tuning in. But without further ado, let's jump into the first set of topics, and we are going straight to video games. Now, this past week, they had the Nintendo Direct showcasing uh, in uh, June. All right, well, shout out to Big Back 70 um the new uh the nintendo direct showcase was uh i believe a week or so ago um in uh this this past month and they were showcasing some of the new stuff that is coming out now a lot of people were anticipating if they were going to show the switch too um we got a little bit of information on it not too much information but we do know that it's coming but what we did get we did get a lot of the rollouts that they're going to be doing video game wise. Um, some of the stuff that they had that were going to be as far as updates, things that were going to be added. Um, they are adding the game Stray, you know, where you get to play play as the cat and stuff. It was very popular over on um, PlayStation. It did very well there. I played it myself. Very, very cool game. Very cool game. If you are um, just trying to kind of chill, get into the game life a little bit, Stray is really cool. Um, as well as they will be doing remakes to Dragon Quest 3 um, H2, HD 2D. So they're getting a remake of Dragon Quest. So you're getting one and two next year. So the following year, they will be doing a remake for Dragon Quest. Um, as well as some other properties that they're going to have being remade. But some of the top things that were taken away from Nintendo Direct um, was the announcement of Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Metro Prime is back. And supposedly... Metro Prime is, it, it's rumored that this will be the first game that will be available on the Nintendo Switch 2. So, don't know if that's confirmed just yet, um, but from the trailers that we saw, it looks like Metroid Prime has not missed a step and it was worth the wait. Uh, Samus is back and I cannot, I can't wait to see the culture for Metroid Prime show out. I didn't realize like how big until you know you go to cons and stuff, how big Metroid is a like like a contender in the Nintendo family. Like, you know, we always consider like Mario, Luigi, like if you think top five Nintendo people, top five Nintendo characters, that's like the face. So this is like the Mount Rushmore of Nintendo characters. Who would who would you put in there? Because I'm hearing a lot of people saying that Metroid is within that Mount Rushmore. So we know we already know two spots are taken up, and that's Mario and Luigi. And Luigi certified himself when he got Luigi's Mansion. Like it wasn't just like coattail type ride, like like Luigi stood out and stood on business. So you got Luigi. Mario, wait, hold on, let me reverse that. Mario, Luigi. Then you got Link from Legend of Zelda. Uh, Donkey Kong. B but if we go on in that top five, let's say I Mount rush for is top five. Who's in top five? Who's that fifth spot? Okay, so someone said in the chat, Pikachu. Oh, man. 
And I can't think of no, I can't think of no other console that's had a Pokemon game. So y'all might be right. So oh, so oh, you know what? Ah, no, you know what? I got ooh, ooh, ooh. no, I can't. And you know what? I thought about Star Fox. I can't give it to Star Fox because Star Fox is a good is a key instrument in the Nintendo franchise. But I would not put him in top five just because Star Fox was not consistent. Like. Star Fox did not uh, is not consistent uh, when it comes to it. So it is a battle between Pikachu and Prime, and I and I and I would say those two battle for number five and six. I think they I think they flip flop, and I think with Prime that that goes. I want I want to get ah, but Pikachu is iconic though. But is he I but is I no, you know what? Here's what here's what I'm gonna say. I'm putting Metroid Prime at number five, and here's why. Because Pikachu garnered its success off of the franchise alone. So that was with movies, television, and everything else. So I can't put that there just yet. Off. Oh, oh fuck. I forgot about I can't believe it. I forgot about the the captain himself, Captain Kirby. Captain Kirby, no, Captain, no, Captain Kirby, Captain Kirby definitely got to be five. Metroid is six. Metroid is six. Captain Kirby been holding it down. Captain Kirby was holding it down for years. Like the pillars of Nintendo. Like if Mario is the face of Nintendo, like like. Kirby gotta be like the Magic Johnson. Gotta be like the Magic Johnson. Cause Luigi is Scottie Pippen. Link is uh Shaq. Link is Shaq. Like, like he just like Link just dominate no matter what. So yeah, I yeah. Um I don't count Yoshi. I'm not counting Yoshi. Yoshi is like side character. He's cool, but I'm not putting him top five. Like I can't put him as the face. So yeah, it gotta go Mario, Luigi, Link, Donkey Kong, Kirby as the top five uh Nintendo characters for their Mount Rushmore. Uh Metroid Prime, I'm gonna put at number six though. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put them in number six. Um just just because like it's true they 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 really yeah you can't you, you just can't i'm sorry you can't hey <laughs> um so just to top that out just so we clear my nintendo mount rushmore we're going mario luigi link donkey kong kirby and honorable mention metroid prime so though those are those are the picks for those those are the picks for that um, Yoshi is definitely Steve Kerr. Somebody said the chat. Yoshi is definitely Steve Kerr. That is a great one. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing what what Metroid is gonna do, as well as you know we mentioned Link uh in the Mount Rushmore. Uh, we're getting another Zelda game, but this time the person who is in the title is finally stepping down off of the throne and getting into the shit. All right. So the uh, new game for Zelda, the next chapter that was announced was The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, where this time you will be playing as Zelda rather than playing as Link. And I have to say this, and I hope Nintendo hears this or y'all share it to Nintendo. But if you do not make a special edition where it's called The Legend of Link, y'all have dropped the ball. Y'all have dropped the ball on this. I'm going to let you know now. If you miss this opportunity to call it the Legend of Link and you play as Zelda, and like I said, special edition. If you don't drop that somewhere, you've missed out on a grand opportunity. Um, I'm not a, a big Zelda fan, it's, and there's no hate towards it. It's just one of the games that just it didn't grab me like it grabbed everybody else. Um, but I did play Breath of the Wild. 
Breath of the Wild was good. I still haven't finished it yet, but that's not because I don't like Link. It's just because I find myself, I haven't finished a lot of my video games, and I need to do that. I might even start doing that on stream, like actually finishing video games and us watching them because it is atrocious that I have still not finished Breath of the Wild. I have one mission from Cyberpunk left, like the finale, and I still haven't played it. I literally stopped. And did not get back on it for some reason. And I only have one, the final mission of Cyberpunk. And I beat the actual game. Still haven't done it. So, um, I need to do that. <laughs> I need to do that. Um, so, but yeah, um, I like the gaming style that they're doing. Kind of playing around with it just to see what's up. I hope that they allow Zelda to have some dope powers kind of to stand on their own so we can kind of see maybe even get a version like breath of the wild uh told by zelda and, and, and something like that but I th it looks like a cute game i'm not gonna play it personally um but i'm sure this will be fun to the fans of the zelda franchise i'm sure this is just a, another great addition to them um and yeah so and then the next things that they showcased of course was uh mario and luigi brothership of course, the, the Jordan and Pippin of Nintendo are getting another RPG game called Mario and Luigi Brothership. Um, it looks good. I've seen the trailer for it. I do like the animation style for Mario and Luigi. It looks really good. Like I, At first, I wasn't too sure about the style. I wasn't too sure of how it was going to look, but I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Um, and if you're a fan of the old school Super Nintendo Mario RPG, just settle in because I think this we've about to get the same stuff, but just a continuation of what they built on. Uh, the remake was good, but to see like this next chapter for them, again, it just adds to their franchise as well, kind of like uh, for Legend of Zelda. And it just shows why they are the top dogs, why they are the top folks. And I'm all here for it. But the two that grabbed me at the showcase, our first one, Super Mario Party Jamboree. It's a jamboree in this bitch. Uh, Mario Party, man, listen. They, they did their thing with this. They did their thing with this. You can play with over 15 people online now. Okay, do you understand? The, the the craziness, which is why they called it Jamboree, because we already know, like, Mario Party is a staple for a lot of folks in the Nintendo world and stuff. Um, and I think the limit that they have is 20 people. 20 people at a time can play this game. Online, at your home, on your Switch. Yo, this game finna go up. Like, it's I, I promise you, Super Mario Party Jamboree finna be up there with Mario Kart. With Mario Kart and Super Smash Brothers. It's going to be like the top three games that's bought on Nintendo Switch. Smash Bros. Mario Kart. Mario Party Jamboree. I cannot wait for me and my friends to get this. Because as you know, we got a Mario Party. A Mario Kart, excuse me, group that we play with. We're going to have that on Twitch coming soon too. So just look out for that. Uh, going live and playing, playing with a couple of my friends as well. Um, but this... This is going to do numbers. This is going to do numbers. And um, I do have to say something, though, about uh, uh, Mario Kart. And I just want this to be known. And this is to anybody that does this. They would not have put the antenna in the game if you're not allowed to use it. Do not bitch at nobody that uses the antenna in Mario Kart. If it was not supposed to be used, it would not be there. So if people want to use it, please use it. Do not let nobody punk you into thinking like, oh, man, you can't play. You got the antenna on. Man, fuck you. You can kiss the lower end of my left testicle. Now, at 200 cc's, you wild. Hey, hey if you play in 200 cc's with no antenna, you're wild. But stop bashing people that use the stuff. I do both. 
I do both. I'll use that antenna, and sometimes I won't use that antenna. I've 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 had it and to where because I've used the antenna to where it has gone horribly wrong, horribly wrong, and has cost me winning the game. That and it has straight like legit cost me, and I and I'm like fuck turning this damn antenna off, turning this shit off. Fuck this. But so. Stop bashing people that use the antenna because we had that in a in a in a, a group a couple of days ago and they was just like, man, no, nah, you can't use the antenna. Yes, you can. Because like two of my own girls was using the antennas. It's like, let them use it. Let them use it. It's there. That's what it's there for. Jeez. Let us play the game the way we want to play it. It is not cheating. Anybody tell you you a cheater and you use an antenna, you can tell them, hey man, you sharp as a pistols and fall on. All right, but Super Mario Party Jamboree, one of my one of the highlights of how I of the Nintendo Direct. But my final one that it not again, this is my personal pick of what was the highlight from the Nintendo Direct. Not you know these were not put into like which one was best, which one was worse. But for me, the highlight myself was Nintendo Switch Sport. Nintendo Switch. Sports. Listen, we sports was off the chain, and you can't tell me no different. You can't. I don't think no one can give a good enough explanation why you do not. You did not like we sports if you tried it. Bowling, tennis, boxing, volleyball, soccer. All of it was fire. All of it was absolute fire. And the fact that it's coming to Switch and the new stuff that they have on it, like the fact that you can now add your controller to your leg and that certifies as a kick for soccer. Yo, Nintendo decided they wasn't playing. They were not playing. Yo, yo, hey. I will say this: so someone in the comment of uh, Big Mac Seventy stated that they need a Olympic qualifier Wii Sports edition. They do need a Wii Sports tournament, though. I will definitely agree with that. We need a Wii Sports tournament, um, and that might be something I cook up. I might have to cook that up. A Switch Sports tournament where they come out, you pick your category, and we will crown first place, second place, third place runners. We need to do that. Um, I can't wait though. I want to try all the sports. I want to do boxing. I want to try tennis and stuff. And it's also a great way for gamers to be active. Um, that's the thing that I really like about it is that, you know, a lot of gamers sit in a chair all day, streamers as well. Like I, I look forward to, I look forward to seeing people, you know, s streaming, playing Nintendo Switch Sports. But it keeps you active. It gets your heart rate up. Like that's what I like about that's what I liked about Wii Sports. So the fact that we got it on Switch now, it's a good exercise. It is a good exercise. Keep you motivated. So um, we're gonna get it um, and play it on my channel, on my Twitch channel. We're gonna definitely play uh, Nintendo Switch and uh, some other stuff as well. So I'm looking forward to it. But all in all, Nintendo Showcase was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, looking forward to so many things dropping. And I feel like that has been just the push so far for even all the categories in which we're talking about today. Like everybody seems to be stepping it up in their respective industries, like video games. Like we've seen it with um, PlayStation. We've even seen it with Xbox. You know, like Xbox, a lot of people um, are talking a lot of noise about it but it's it they stepping their game up i think xbox is about to come with something really dope that people are not going to expect like i saw their showcase out here in la and it was really good um so i look forward to it but um I say all of that to say, not only have it been doing it in video games but it's also been moving like that when it comes to television and so that's what we're going to jump into now. We in our television portion. And we talking House of the Dragon. Yo. 
Y'all, if you saw it, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, this is a spoiler warning, okay? If you haven't seen it, please exit the video, exit if you on live, exit the live. Go check out one of the other episodes that I have a of a comic book. You can go watch who we picked as the top dads in a previous video. Go watch that because we about to talk about it. House of Dragons returned last Sunday. We got a new episode coming out this Sunday. Let me tell y'all something, man. I, I have never seen people divided like this since Bloods and Crips. People are are representing if they are going black or if they're going green. And obviously, we know New York chose green because the Empire State Building put up that big ass green dragon saying they mess with the high towers. And that's why I don't fuck with New York. Y'all be letting too much shit attack y'all. Y'all got dragons on the Empire State Building. You got Godzilla roaming around. Got fucking Ninja Turtles in the sewer. How y'all live like that? How you live like that? I just got to deal with racist people. You got to deal with Godzilla? Godzilla? That's wild. That's wild. Y'all got too much happening in New York for me. Too much happening. It's too much that be going on in New York, man. That's why I stay I stay far away and safe, man. But, um... House of the Dragon picked up, um, to some people's case, a little slow in the beginning, but um, at the end, just left you shell-shocked. Um, and one thing we can definitely determine that war is coming. Ain't no, ain't no, hey, you know what? Can we talk about this? Can we, can we talk about this for a second? I know my son... Accidentally let his dragon eat your son. Yeah, I, I, and I, and I get it. That's me, yo. That's messed up. That and that, that's that's on us. That's on us. We shouldn't have let that happen. We shouldn't have let that happen. I should have, I should have watched my son a little bit more. Told him like, hey, bro, don't. Hey, listen, stay your ass at the house. Stay your ass at the castle, bro. Don't you don't be out there. I don't care what they did to your little eye, bro. We got you a magical. You got a blue magical eye. What what more do you want? Nah, man. Nah, bro. Princess said, I ain't playing that shit. I ain't playing that. Yo, when she... First of all, when her husband was trying to be like, yo, man, we need to go get these cats. We need to go get these cats. And um, her her, her advisor from the, from the ship crew was like, yo, you don't understand, bro. Like, you, like yo, she, she lost a kid. I lost a kid, but I got to mourn mine. I got to... I got to bury them properly. I got to I got to say goodbye to something. Man, when she said that, bro, I felt I felt for the princess. Bro, I felt for her, bro. I felt for Princess Targaryen, bro. That shit, yo, because when when they said that it hit home. And I was like, dang, that's so true. It was so like it was just like it was so it's just like I don't know why it touched me the way it did, but it was just like, yo, to hear her say that, it's like, yo, it's true because she don't have nothing to bury. She didn't get to like see her son. She didn't say goodbye to her son. Like her son is digested and um was probably shit out across the sea by that dragon. And um that's about it. So she didn't even get to to touch him, to hold him. And I keep calling her princess, even though I do need to call her queen, because uh, she, she she is technically queen. So my apologies. But uh, queen queen uh uh Rhaenyra, like bro, when she went, when she was walking, she was walking that beach, and she saw them dragon pieces there. First of all, the way she called her dragon down though was like, yo, everybody, back the fuck up, back the fuck up. But to see them pieces, dog, and when she grabbed that, man, when she grabbed that jacket, yo, I, yo, I, it was right here for me. It was right here for me. When she grabbed that jacket and was holding it, yo, you could feel her pain. You felt it because it's like, yo, this is all 
I have left of my son. It don't even matter that she got other sons. The fact of it just being like, yo, my son is gone. My son is gone. That man, that hard hitting, hard hitting. And then um, I gotta talk about it. I gotta talk about it. Let's let's talk. Let's talk about the queen over in over there in the high towers. Um. Like, like what, what, what's, what's happening with, with her? Like, I don't understand. Like how, how, if you on team green, how are you supporting her movements? How are you supporting any of their movements? Now, don't get me wrong. Queen Targaryen, a little out there for marrying her uncle. I'm like, for me, that's a lot. That is a lot. But it's old, it's olden times trying to keep the, the bloodlines pure. The thought process I can reason with to go, okay, cool. But Queen Hightower, no. How I don't understand how you rocking with the high towers, bro. How you gonna sleep with your former best friends? Baby daddy. You got and I and here's my thing. Queen Hightower is beautiful. It ain't like you can't pull anybody else. So many people in that castle. So many people in that kingdom. Why did you pick your former best friend's baby's daddy? And, and and to all of those that, that, that may disagree with me on how, on how she look, when I say beautiful, I mean like classic beauty. Like I don't mean like, yo, she bad. She bad. Like face-wise, she is a beautiful woman. I don't care what nobody say. Like facial-wise, she is, she, she is what you call a classic beauty. And she is. Um, But how out of everybody you sleep with your best friend's baby daddy? And not expect that war is gonna come. Like you are, you are, you are literally writing a note that says, "Hey, I want to go to war. I, I, I do not care about anything in this castle nor anyone. Please bring these dragons here and burn this shit to the ground." There's no way you can. There's no possible way you care about what happens. Like, I don't understand how y'all rep for Team Green. I do not understand how y'all rep for Team Green. We already we already got him in there j just acting a fool. Uh, her her son, uh, what it is, her son, Aegon. Oh, man, look, don't listen to nobody. Don't listen to nobody. And you know what, too? I wanted to give it, I wanted to give it uh to her son, the king. I wanted to give it to King Aegon the second. I really did. But the only problem that I have with him when it comes to this is that he does a lot of stuff out of spite for his parents. And he does a lot of stuff out of spite for his family members. Like he's just, it's one of those, I'm a rebellious person. And you can tell like, you don't respect hierarchy. Like there's a difference between like Prince Damon um and how he acts. Like there's a there's a whole difference between that. Like that dude just a savage. But we you can understand his concept as towards who he is, which is why he ain't really fit to rule. But King Aegon is just like, bro, like you show like like when he when he was sitting at the throne, he was listening to the people. And your advisor is trying to tell you some real shit. Now, don't get me wrong. Otto ain't shit. He ain't, he ain't, he is a no shit nigga. I'm 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 still gonna throw that out there. All them high towers ain't shit, like at all. Them high towers is bad news. They toxic. But he was at least giving him some real advice. It's just like, yo, we trying to pay these people off, 
with these livestock to protect you, to protect your family, to protect everybody so we can gather forces so these Targaryens don't come over and burn this place to the ground. So while I know this cat's struggling, just keep in mind, if you open that gate, the flood gonna come in. You do it for one, it's gonna spread around the castle and people gonna think you gonna do it for everybody. That's some real shit because a king got to make some hard ass choices. And you can tell Aegon's choice that he think that he don't want to make is by listening to everybody. Otto told him some real shit and he didn't want to listen to him. And it's like, yo, that's how you're going to fuck up your kingdom. Like, it's cool if you want to please the people, but you also got to please the court. And if you start not finding a balance with that, you're you going to mess around and end up like your kid. And, and blood and cheese going to come knocking. But we're going to jump into that in just a second. I do want to point out that we did get our first look at the Starks, which was dope. We got to see the wall. We got to see um, we got to see um, one of her one of the uh, uh, queen's sons, uh, one of the queen Targaryen sons, go over there, and we we got our first introduction to what uh, to the Stark clan, um, and which made a lot of sense, uh, uh, which made a lot of sense as to why that story builds towards um, Game of Thrones, um, especially after having the conversation that he had with Stark. Over there at the ice wall, which also makes me think that the White Walkers are already there because of something that he stated too. He was kind of like, "Oh, um, you know, well, what's out there besides the cold and and like the beast and stuff like that?" And some of maybe like the natives that live within there is like, "Yo, now nah, you 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 have no idea what the fuck out there." So that leads me to believe the White Walkers already somewhat exist. And I know there was some rumors going around that um, people were believing that Prince uh, Aemon, the one with the, the one with the missing eye, that he was potentially the uh, the Frost King. I may be saying his name wrong. The uh, Frost King. Uh, they were saying that that might be him, but I feel like he's already there, and that's told from like a story like even longer. Than uh, before House of the Dragon. Like I think he's been there for a while. It may have even been the cause. Of why the cold came. So I don't think it's uh, Aemon. That is the Frost King. But it is a cool theory. But I think people just kind of like. Seeing the eye and stuff like that. And then that's why they kind of like. Associate him with that. Um, but it was real cool to see. Um, these lineages uh, be introduced, especially so early here in this, this, uh, you know, taking place a hundred years before Game of Thrones. So it was cool to really see that. Uh, but who that last part, that last part, man, look, listen, usually I don't do this, but uh, I had to. I had, yo, just just thinking about it, of what Blood and Cheese did at the end of that episode. I you you forget how real this can get when you watch House of the Dragon. You you tend to like go like, okay, it's a TV show, and you kind of see what's coming. But you in that moment when Blood and Cheese got to that castle. And got inside the other queen's room. The one, uh, 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 what it is, Aegon's, uh, uh, queen, uh, queen, uh, Helena. When queen, when they got in the queen Helena's room, and had her held hostage, and I was like, oh, yo, this shit real. Cause watching them infiltrate the castle felt like you was getting infiltrated a little bit. Now again, I don't fuck with Team Green like that, but that feeling of being somewhere. And that thought process you kind of have. You ever been like in a in a in a house that's a little big, like maybe five bedrooms or something like that? Ain't even necessarily even got to be five. It can probably be less than that, like three. But just like when you in a place, you ever get the thought that somebody else might be here, or there's someone lurking within here? Like it's like, yo, man, I don't like the fact that this door closed in the room upstairs because what if somebody in there? And it's like, yo, why the fuck would somebody be in here? But it's like, but what if somebody is? 
everyone has that feeling. Even if you don't, you know, harp on it or even if you don't play on it, um, you still have that feeling. And that's the feeling I felt when they were infiltrating the castle. It's like, yo, anybody can really walk up in this bitch. And they did. And they got to your room. And not only did they get to her room, they made her make a choice. And what's crazy about it is she called that shit in the beginning of the episode. That woman called that she tried to tell her husband, like, yo, I'm scared. And she mentioned the fucking rats. Because one of them dudes in Blood and Cheese is a rat catcher. And she kept mentioning that that whole episode. I kept looking for rats. But it was like, yo, I really didn't see any rats like that. So we started getting towards the end and we saw the traps and the dude walk off. And I'm like, okay. But, you know, I, I, and I never associated with it. But it's like, yo, it's a big ass thing. Like, of course, they don't have areas where there's rats and stuff and infestations and shit. Like, you know, it's old times. But she called that and told that man that. And he didn't do nothing. And that that's the reason why uh, the king is going to really mess up. And I think he's going to wind up getting killed. I think he's going to wind up getting killed or he's going to wind up killing himself. Kind of like uh, a Lannister kid did when he walked out the uh, out the window and just, 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 just exit life. Um... And he told her and he didn't pay attention. And your arrogance cost you your son. And you know what, too? My, we, we had this conversation in a group of mine. And they was like, I, if I was her, I wouldn't have chosen. I would have said, like, like some people believe, like, yo, why didn't she sacrifice herself and let the two kids live? And then the only problem with that is... Blood and cheese was coming back with somebody's head, a son's head at that. And how I showed it was you risk losing all three of you by doing that. Because if they kill you, there's the son and the daughter left. You start sawing off the brother's head. The daughter wakes up, screams. Now you got to take the daughter out. So now there's two kids and he only requested one. That's two kids and a queen taken out. Yo, that's that that when I saw like when they was like, yo, choose. Choose who you going to take out. I knew she was going. She was like, pick which one is your son. I already knew she picked the son. And the reason why I knew she picked the son, because she did not want another one of hers ascending to the throne. She did not want another guy in there. That's why when the guy that's why when the rat catcher looked at her, he was like, nah, she's telling the truth. She tell the truth. And she walked out and all you hear is the sawing sound. And that bitch just cut off and showed the credits. I had to, yo, I, I, I had to go outside after that. I had to go outside. I had to go outside because when she was walking and I heard the sound, I this was my exact reaction. I was like, are they cutting that baby's head off? Like, literally, like, I had to look at my homeboy and I was just like, are they cutting that baby's head off? I was like, you hear that? Are they? Are they really cutting that baby's head off? Yo, that shit flipped me out. That shit freaked me the fuck out. I I I was no. I man, and, and you know what's what's crazy and how crazy the world is today. Let me let me let me let me talk to y'all for a second. Now I heard a lot of people talking about how they were disappointed in the first episode and how if you read the books. Blood and cheese do a lot worse than that. Like, do a lot worse, um, actually. Um, and they toned it down a lot. And then also, too, though, um, in this next episode, I it they also again remember they also have to escape. Like, I and I don't know how they're gonna play that, but there's a part in the book where like they have to get out the castle and they don't wind up getting out. And that's what truly sparks the war. 
uh, between um, both Targaryen parties. Here's my thing. This is how you know from the people who were bitching and complaining about like it being downsized and disappointing. This is just an, a testament of how we need a reset in today's society. Because how hearing the sounds of someone getting their head cut off and you know that it's a child happening, how that does not shake you in your bones and you're like, we want more, says a lot about you. And I mean a whole lot about you. Because that's wild. That's so wild. That child said that that people are a really saying like they were disappointed in blood and cheese, that it wasn't it what like it was toned down. I'm like, what what did you want? Like, what do you want to see? Like, yo, like let this show have some decorum at least. So that's just wild, bro. Like, if we that's why I say we need we need to reset. People need to go touch some grass. People need to sit down. Like, you need to do something, man. Go outside, get some sun. Cause if if to you that wasn't enough, I don't know what to tell you. Cause that had me shook. That had me so shook. So um I don't know what really comes next in this uh in the in the episode that's coming out, but we do know. That the episode, I believe, is 69 minutes uh, long uh, for this next episode that comes out. So we're going to see what happens with the ramifications of blood and cheese cutting off uh, that baby's head. Um, Queen uh, w- w- Queen Hightower getting exposed by Queen Helena. Uh, fucking <sighs> Sir, Sir Kristen Cole. Kristen Cole ain't shit. But I knew that when I saw his hairstyle. I knew he wasn't going to be a no shit. I knew he was a no shit nigga. I knew it. I knew he wasn't nothing. I knew it from the second I saw him. This motherfucker ain't shit. And he proven it. He proven it. First part in the, in the whole episode, he eating box. Like, bruh. Bruh, why? Why, though? Why? But I ain't going to lie, bro. He got, hey, he got some good quality under his belt. Hey, hey. You done, you, you done drop rope on two queens? Well, there you have it then, young man. So, but um, speaking of which, and another thing of people, you know, claiming to be disappointed. Um, the Boys. Season four is out. Four episodes in. We halfway through the season. I believe because it's only eight. Um, a lot of critics been hating. A lot of critics been hating. For some reason, because the first episode didn't top a small miniature man running through a dick and then blowing the motherfucker up, apparently that's not, apparently a four is very slept on. Four is very lower than what three was. It's like, sometimes I just wonder, are we, are we watching the same thing? Like we, we watching the same show, right? We watching this. I, I could have sworn we watching the same show. Now don't don't get me wrong. Why would you want to top that? And then two, it's like as a showrunner, as a person that writes a show, as a person that makes a show, it's not about topping your next season, but it's all it's about being consistent. It's about you going season one was dope. Season two was dope. Season three was fucking fire. Season four, fucking great. It, it, it's not about topping it. It's not about topping your next season. But it's about making sure the con- it, it, it has a good consistency to it. And the boys ain't disappointed in that. Like I was really curious as to how they were going to pivot in the show with everything going on. And... I think they've done a great job. I think we've 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 crossed kind of a threshold as to the reality of our life, our real life blending into the story. Like they've normally like put it in. Sometimes they make it very obvious what it is. Um But in this one it feels very real. Like the only thing that's not 
real about this whole show is the superheroes. But if you were taking the superheroes out, it kind of feels like the world today. And I don't think that they were too shy on that in this season, in these last four episodes. Um, but all in all, it's got me interested. There's depths in this story that have gotten tremendous. Like Frenchie's story was not expecting. They was not expecting Frenchie to have this story. Was not expecting him to do this. Uh, was not expecting how that was going to go. Uh, Kimiko's story. Love their development in season four. Them kind of separating. Them kind of being on their own. I love seeing Kimiko interact with the other members of the boys. Like watching her and Huey like have more conversations. Seeing like the banter between them. It's not a lot, but to just see like, okay, hey, there's a mutual respect from both of them. Like they both like fuck with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, he respects her. He don't look at her no different way. And Kimiko feels like she's not being judged. Like, she can be comfortable around him. I like that a lot of them are getting their own ways and being able to come back to try to deal with it. Like, I like that we're not harping on Starlight and Huey's story as far as a relationship. I love seeing that they're solid. I like that it's a solid foundation. We're not seeing cracks of them being together. Like, we've gotten past that. We got bigger shit to worry about. Uh, watching Starlight's new, like, new phase, or excuse me, uh, Annie January, as she is right now. Oh, uh, how she's developing. Butcher's story. Like, yo, near death, man. Seeing his wife uh, just... All of it is so good. Even Mother's Milk being being the front man now, not really seeing his OCD and really standing 10 toes down for his people. Like, it's like, nah, bro, like, we know how important we are to this. And I can't let you fuck this up no matter how much I care about you. I can't let you fuck this up for everybody else. Um, And then just everybody's having a like the, the storyline and the growth and the evolution of all these characters just have been written so well and I'm enjoying just seeing each and every single one of them even like a trains like from where a train started to where a train is now hands down one of the top uh character developments like attic murderer and then just like really showing like the breaking point like even like to the point of, I think what episode three where mother's milk was like I think we can turn them. I think we can turn a train and they were right because it's like a train knows like, bro, I can't do this no more. I see the veil like I, I I've seen it to where I have messed up from my mistakes. I've been kicked out the seven. I've been brought back in the seven. I've lost my powers. I've almost died. I, I damn near died. I had my heart replaced to where now I can run fast again. Like the development of his story is excellent. The introduction to the new members of Seven, like Firecracker, Sister Sage, Sister Sage is Sister Sage didn't probably only been like like in maybe I want to say th three episodes like that, and already Sister Sage then has done way more than uh what's her face um the the Nazi chick been done coming in there that like sister sage is a problem sister sage is a real problem because you don't know whose side sister sage is on as much as she's assisting homelander in this plan what is her end goal because it doesn't seem like it's going to be Homelander being the, the, the dominant person or like superheroes being a dominant species. Like, I don't get that feeling from her. So I'm very curious as to like, yo, what is this lady's real game plan when it comes to this? Because it, I like when she stuck that when she lobotomized, told, told deep to bot lobotomize her. So she can stop thinking. I'm like, yo, if you doing that to yourself, because I'm sure it she hasn't done. I'm sure she's done that by herself, too. I'm sure she has lobotomized herself before. Man, when I saw that, that's when I knew that woman ain't nothing to fuck with. Something going on.
something going on. But this show is great, and of course, you know, like the the, the big the big takeaway is Homelander. Um, and the actor that plays Homelander needs a Oscar, bro. Not an Oscar, a, a, a Emmy. Anthony Starr has been killing it. He has been killing it as Homelander. Uh, man, have you seen this last episode? When he went back home. Man, that's, I ain't gonna front, bro. That's up there with House of the Dragon, the first, first episode. That's up there. That's up there with them. Bro, when he when he lays it off that dude, Dick, I was like, Homelander, you childish. You're childish. You are childish as fuck. The dude with the heat even was far, because I was like, I get it. When the doc, when the other doctor came in, though, when what's her face, uh, what it was, uh, when that doctor came in and just wasn't scared of him at all, didn't say anything, just was kind of like, yo, let me talk to you for a second. That's when you knew Homelander was a monster. That's when you truly knew, like, yo, Homelander needs to be stopped. This ain't even about no what you can compare him to in real life or nothing like that. But you can tell this person needs to be stopped because he's unstable. And the reason why you're unstable, because y'all took the one thing that he needed and you manipulated it and turned it into a weapon. He thinks being human is weak, which would actually make him more stronger if he actually knew how to accept love. But the fact that everybody used him, uh, yo, no, I'm not, hey, he, hey, look, listen, in the chat, he did it. I ain't pausing nothing. He did it, not me. That's exactly what he did. And he didn't pause at all. He laughed, actually. He, he, he didn't pause nothing. He laughed. Laughed at that man. They told him, put him out of his misery. Please say, please stop. Like, please, he's done. Can't do nothing for him. Take him out of his misery. But this show you like that dude's a monster. When she said that like, yo, the person that was carrying you, you lasered them out of the womb and floated up. That's wild. That's so wild. When I found that, when she said that, that's what I knew all about Homelander. I'm like, bro, nothing, like, you have to go because nothing is ever going to satisfy you. There's this black hole within you that is never going to be satisfied. No one can fill it. Nothing you do can fill that void. And Homelander would be the type of person that, this is the person that Lex Luthor would fear. Right here. Like this, the energy Lex Luthor be giving uh, Superman, this is who he need to get at to. We need a Lex Luthor here in the boys because that's what the energy you need for this guy. Because I can see Homelander killing everybody on earth except Supes and he still be miserable. It's still not enough. Then he will try to make other people. It's still not enough. He's, it's not going to be enough. Then he destroys everyone. It's still not enough. It's never going to be enough for him. There is a black hole in that man's chest and Butcher need to take him out. He needs to die. Like His mental is completely gone. There's no saving it. And that's what we learned with the boys. So I don't I don't know how these last four episodes are going to end. We also know that season five will be the final season for the boys. We know we're getting some spinoffs and stuff like that. You know, like the boys in Mexico, uh, Gen V is still going to be happening. But we know the boys itself has one more season after this. And they are riding off into the sunset. So we shall see what happens next. But moving forward uh, to more comic book news, the trailer for the Penguin series dropped. I mean, I don't have to say too much on this. Like, it looks great. It looks great. Colin Farrell is back as the Penguin. The Penguin looks extraordinary. It makes it looks like 
a coming of age Scarface type thing. Um, you know, you know, Scarface Mafia type. His ascension as one of the leading rogues in Batman, and it just didn't disappoint. Like if you like the Batman film by Matt Reeves, this story for this TV show is on that same keel. And I believe they were saying we even might see the next character. Uh, yeah. Um, they, I'm sorry about that. I think I had some technical difficulties. Um, they said that we're going to see one of the villains that will be featured in the Batman sequel. So I'm excited to uh, watch it and to see what's going to happen. Uh, Cause that, that's going to get very interesting. That's going to get very interesting. Uh, but I can't wait for it to drop. I can't wait for it to come out. I can't wait for it to, I don't know how many episodes we getting, but I know it's coming out on max. Um, but I'm excited. <laughs> Walking through church with my family. I'm going to be right back. My uh, uh, strand of a comic book is on. Excuse me, Father. I feel you easy not. Um, but yeah, I, like, I don't have too much to say on it just because we know it's going to be great. Like, we know it's going to be good. Like, we saw we saw what Colin Farrell did in the Batman. Like, he gave us a new look at Penguin. And I love this version of Penguin. Not You know, don't get me wrong. Danny DeVito's character, great. That's why I don't want to... I don't, I don't like to compare the two because I'm like, for what he did as the Penguin, it is top notch. I like the different version of the Penguin that Colin Farrell gave us. I'm not going to compare the two. I'm not going to say his is better than Dane DeVito's. I never want to do that with these type of characters, especially like when we had a conversation about the Joker and like who's the best Joker. Because I'm like, all of them play different Jokers. So I can't compare the two. Like the closest I can even pair with the Jokers is Jack Nicholson and then the, uh, the Hispanic guy that played him in the original uh, TV show with Adam West because they were the similar Joker. And that's if you decide you want to compare the two, which I still try not to. So that's why it's like it's hard for me to when we, when we talk about who's the best of it because they give different versions of them that stands out. And Colin Farrell isn't doing no different with this penguin or Oz as they call him. So I look forward to seeing the eyes of Gotham through a villain and why you can see the flaws of why the Batman is here. You can see the flaws in it, the good things and the flaws in it by what's going on. So I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait for it to drop. Um, and then speaking of some other things I couldn't wait to drop. Whoo! Let's talk about it, y'all. Let's talk about it. Now, usually, you know, I, I don't. I, I try to keep wrestling with the uh, women's wrestling talk uh, podcast. You can catch me there normally on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for the WWT Live. But man, listen, I had to talk about this. <sighs> the Wyatt Six. The Wyatt Six debuted this past Monday on Monday Night Raw. Um, if you're not a wrestling fan, if you are a wrestling fan, um, this group is a creative from the late, great Bray Wyatt, a.k.a. Wyndham Rotunga. Um, rest in peace to him. Um, he had a vision that he had created that he had displayed throughout WWE for over, I want to say, maybe like over the span of eight years. Gave us incredible moments, has garnered so much respect for uh, from all of the wrestling community, all of the wrestlers, everything. And it was unfortunate that he did pass, um, I want to say about three years ago, um, due to um, heart complications and COVID. But um, his brother, who uh, his brother Taylor, um, also known as Bo Dallas, uh, played one of his newer characters, Uncle Howdy when Bray returned. And so with his passing, uh, his brother has picked up the mantle and is carrying on with the concept of the Wyatts. And they did not miss a beat this past Monday. Um, because of copyright reasons, I can't show the video. So, but when I tell you, uh, one of the things that were promoted through here was a massacre was coming. 
And a massacre they did. And their introduction into the WWE, I'm telling you, like, it made almost any fan of Bray Wyatt, it made you tear up. Because, like, if you know who Bray Wyatt is, you know the creativity that he has put within his characters for the people that he's created throughout these characters. To see this vision come to life the way it did, it was straight cinema. I know it's supposed to be a sports entertainment show. Man, this was pure cinema what they gave us. Five members were introduced. We believe that there's one more that's going to be introduced here. But I cannot. I look so forward to Monday Night Raw and to see what's going to come of them. And so, like I said, I know we don't normally talk about wrestling, but I have to tell you just the impact that it made for everyone that was a fan. I believe their clip when they debuted um, within four hours, it was at 25 million. That's how I watched this, this video was like, I still watch this video. I still watch this video. Um, and matter of fact, what we'll do is, um, after the, uh, episode when the Q and a, I'll, I'll, I'll probably play the video. I'll play the video for those that stay after the Q and a, just so you can see it. Um, but yeah, the wide six are here and their debut was nothing short of amazing. And I look forward to seeing how their story plays out into the WWE universe because it is going to be a wild ride. Now, um, to get into our final segments of movies, uh, but before we get into movies, oh, I, I don't, I don't really know where this falls. Um, so we're going to go movie slash television. Um, Harry Potter, Harry Potter, uh, <laughs> AKA Daniel Radcliffe, man. Shout out to Daniel Radcliffe, bro, for winning his first Tony award. All right. Um, and no, it was not for Harry Potter. Just so we're very clear on that. It was not for Harry Potter. Um, it was for his portrayal of uh, Charlie uh, Kringus. I hope I said that uh, uh, right. Um, the lyricist and best friend of Franklin Sheepard in the musical Merrily We Roll Along. Um, it has been going throughout the country, I believe, and a, a phenomenal play. If you're in the play in theater, this is one of those that they say, hey, don't miss this. It is a great show. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe does a phenomenal job playing, uh, once again, Charlie. And in his first nomination, he achieved his first win as well, receiving a, a, a Tony for, I believe, Best Supporting Actor in the uh, film, if not, I believe, Best Actor. Uh, so congratulations to Daniel Radcliffe, man. Um, just showing you that he's not a one trick pony with Harry Potter and he really isn't. He's done a lot of uh, other films and TV spots just to show you, man, I, I, I'm, I got versatility. I can do a lot and he's not stopping with it. And then also too, a special extra congratulations to him because not only did he win a Tony award, but he also won another constellation, not a constellation prize, excuse me. Uh, won another great uh, reward, which is the title of father. He also this past uh, weekend uh, uh, welcomed in his new son, along with his longtime girlfriend. I believe her name is Erin Dark. Um, they, I believe he would. No, I'm sorry. They had him in uh, April of uh, April 2023. So he got to celebrate his first Father's Day as a dad. So congratulations. To Daniel Radcliffe, um, just phenomenal news in my opinion. So, moving forward uh, to some other people that ain't one trick ponies, it has been uh, announced that Tom Holland will be returning as Nathan Drake as they are in development for a Uncharted sequel. Um. It was announced, I believe, this week. Not a lot of us information has been given, but we know he is returning as well as Mark Wahlberg, as Sully, um, and the rest of the cast has yet to been disclosed. Now, I'm excited for it. Don't get me wrong. I like the first Uncharted movie. I thought it was great. But my only thing with this, man, and I, and I just I have to be honest, Mark Wahlberg should have been Nathan Drake. 
Mark Wahlberg should be starring in this film. And you should have gotten an older Sully to play along with Mark Wahlberg. Like, I don't, I, I not, not, not to say I don't get it. I understand because um, it's, they want to do franchise. Tom Holland's the better way to go because we know we can get him to do more stunts. We know he can, we can get him to be in here a little bit longer. That type of stuff. Physical conditioning, everything. Uh, for Mark Wahlberg, I understand, you know, other obligations, other movies and television shows he may be helping produce, create. So I understand why they went with the more obvious choice as far as longevity is concerned. I just still, as far as the aesthetic of the game, Mark Wahlberg is Nathan Drake. Like, why is he not Nathan Drake? Why is he not the star of Uncharted? Like, it, that's the only thing that irked me about it so bad. But the movie itself was good. Like, the action was good. It was in classic fashion of Uncharted. So, hopefully they can continue that moving into the sequel. Um, but as more information comes... You know, we'll talk about it here on Stroud of a Comic Book. So we'll see. It is something that's still on my radar. I'm not going to say I'm excited. I should take that back. I'm not excited, but I am intrigued. So um, what we can get into is our main topic. And our main topic is Blade. So, let's jump into the first latest news. Um, we have had another actor who has backed out of Blade, and that is actor Delroy Lindo. Delroy, uh, uh, Delroy Lindo has uh, backed out of the Blade uh, movie. It was announced this week, um, as well as we know the director has also backed out of Blade as well. And then uh, more news within Blade is that uh, we heard that one of the scripts that had been presented was that uh, Blade was supposedly going to be set in the 1920s. I just want to know, like, is is it a complicated story? Like, is it like for some reason is 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 Blade just like hard for the writers to grasp? Like, I'm, I'm just I'm so confused at why this movie is having so many problems, which is why you should just cancel the whole thing at this point. Cancel this whole shit. Because what was Blade going to do in the 1920s? Did they even wear leather in the 1920s? Like, what, like, what? what? <sighs> it just pisses me off because this, this is a simple story. And I don't mean simple in a bad way. Like, this is a simple story for you to make happen. I don't understand why we're running into these things like this. I just, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. Like, you, you have... So many options to do stuff with this. And the thing is, it's like, you can either use the villains that he has or introduce us into something different. And if, and, and, and the one thing that I can say about this. The biggest thing that I can say about this is. The, the one that you could use 
is is complicated, and that I get. Like his big, like one of his biggest villains is Doc, is Morbius, and we know Sony owns the right to Morbius, and we know that they put out Morbius, and we know Morbius didn't go too well. But I wouldn't have my and the thing was I feel like they did drop the ball on that because Morbius should have never been a movie. Morbius should have never came out. Um. Oh wow, dang, Bray died last August. Wow, it felt like so long ago. It hasn't even been a year. Yo, that's how much I've like you know just just talking about the Y six. That's how much. I've tried to put that behind my head. Like, it felt like... Because it, it felt like during the pandemic. I don't know why. And I feel like the pandemic just happened so long ago. Like, yo, that really did just happen. You are right. That really just happened. It felt like three years ago. Jeez. And even to that point, like, it felt like... <laughs> like, now with all the stuff that didn't happen in wrestling, like, yo, like, WrestleMania, like, XL... Feel like that happened almost a year ago. Like, like I feel like the Royal Rumble finna come up in like a few months. Like, that's just how much stuff that just didn't happen in wrestling. Um, with it, but thank you for uh correcting me, uh, Joaquin Owens. Uh, thank you for that. I man, it just I I I wanted to put it in like it didn't happen. Now I'm in my feelings again because it really did happen in August. Fuck. Uh, but anyway, back to Blade though. Um. I understand that you can't use Morbius. Although this is where you should have introduced Morbius. This was the perfect introduction for Jared Leto's Morbius to have been introduced. And that be Blade's main villain. And then too, if you wanted Morbius to turn him like it was in the Spider-Man comic book. That worked along just well. But for some reason... Um, what's they face is just, I don't know. I mean, you know, we, we don't know what they doing over there at Sony at this point. At this point, you, we don't know. But for all other purposes, though, like Baron Blood could have been somebody. Or the Bloods in general, because, you know, you got Baroness Blood as well. Um, uh, there's so many of these different characters that could have been used for Blade. And to be honest with you, it's like the biggest one to even use, you 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 act like you you just don't want to utilize it, which is vampires. Cuz here's my thing about it, like Blade don't necessarily need a major villain. Or at least even to a, rec a recognizable villain. It doesn't need one immediately, if, if that makes sense. Like, you could have gotten away with Blade showing this world that Blade lives in because we haven't seen that world yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've seen Avengers. We've seen a little bit of, like, Moon Knight. We've seen the magical side. We've seen a small slither of your world in Werewolf by Night. But we haven't seen... The world that Blade lives in. So if you want, so that's one I did. Now again, I, I don't think that you should put that fully on a Blade movie. That's just my opinion. But if it's like you have to write one, there it is. But this whole thing about it being set in the 20s, it being he has to protect this princess vampire and stuff like that. It's like, yo, like, is it just... Are you just finding difficulty on what story to use? Is that what it is? I'm I'm so confused. And then also too, you don't necessarily have to keep it with just vampires. If I'm being honest, if you if you wanted to, you you could legit have other magical creatures be in this film. It don't have to just be vampires. It can be all sorts of mythical because he didn't just fight vampires. That was his like his specialty. But it's like, yo, like this man fought dark elves. This man fought like 
Uh, I think there was like what there was like boy thing, like man, like man thing, like mixed in with this other dude and stuff like that. Like, uh, I, I believe he's even battled Null at one time. You know, I don't, I don't like I said like fate, like fist up and stuff and everything. But like, it's not just vampires that Blade goes after. So it's like I don't get what's the issue. What's take what? What's the problem with this this movie? Like, what are you, what's stopping y'all? What are y'all saying? Like, no, this isn't right. Send it back. No, we don't like this. Send it back. No, we're not fucking with this. Send it back. Like, what is going on? Like, I don't get it. But I still go back to my original point that we talked about on the previous episode that I don't think Blade needs a movie. I think you need to give Blade the Hawkeye treatment and, and sprinkle him into movies. And build the world that is needed with other major characters. So then that way we can determine what we want to see from Blade. Do we want a full length movie? Do we want a Marvel Presents? Or do we want a TV series? Because I I, I love Blade. I think Blade is a phenomenal character. But let's let's keep it up. Let's keep it a, a, a buck. Blade ain't Blade ain't the A A list characters. He ain't. He's second tier. He's not a top tier character. We just got to throw that out there. He's a top tier favorite. But in the Marvel Universe, he's bro. Like he's not. He's he's in the second class, if anything. And even too, some folks might even argue with that because you got a long list of people that can end up in the, in the second tier. So it's not necessary that he needs a movie fully if you get what i'm saying like i i would would feel more comfortable with a tv show so you give us more time for us to adjust to that world too so i don't i don't know what they're doing i don't know what's happening with it but something got changed man something something got to change and i think the change should be just cancel blade just cancel it like cancel it and say hey we're gonna put you in the bigger grand picture and we're going to come back to you in phase six. We'll see where you at after the multi saga. And then we'll trickle that in. But for now, it's just not looking good. It's just not looking good. And I and I, I stand on that. I think you should just cancel the whole project rather than giving us some crap. Because the last thing Marvel Studios needs, it can't take no more bombs right now. You need you need some back to back hitters. Deadpool and Wolverine is gonna give you a hit. Um, Agatha is gonna give you a hit. I don't care what nobody say. Agatha gonna be fire. But you got You need some consistent hits these next two to three years. And with all the stuff we hearing about Blade, it's not sounding good. It's not sounding good. I say cancel that joint and find the best way to put him in there, um, in the MCU. Because if not, you're going to give us a bad a bad taste of Blade, and that's going to backfire on you real bad. Real bad. And that's what you don't want. You don't want that. So um, we're going to see. We're going to see what's going to happen. Uh, but that is going to be it for today's episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. Follow all of our socials. So it's Straight Out of a Comic Book, just like you see it read right here. Uh, Shroud of a Comic Book at Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. All of those are there. You'll see the pop-ups come at the end as well. Uh, make sure you follow. Hit the like button on the YouTube video. Subscribe to the channels. Follow the social medias, man. Just keep making sure we keep this thing growing. Shout out to everybody that came in here today. And um, yeah, we will catch you next time. I've been your host, Will Farrow. Peace.